Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm in our brand new showroom here in New York. We're working really hard here at Able City to uh, renovate and rebuild our space and even expand to another floor. Uh, and this renovation also included building a brand new showroom, which includes what you see behind you here, which is a, a stage where we have cameras set up for you to compare. We also have other areas where you can do compare multiple systems together. It's a very interactive and fun space, so if you're in New York, please come and check it out. Uh, but today we're checking out the brand new Sound Devices PIX240. We talked a lot about this at NAB, uh, and we're really surprised to see sound devices who traditionally makes very robust and reliable uh, sound recorders and mixers. We're excited to see that they're making a video recorder. A little odd, but we found that this recorder also has that same reliability and robustness, so we're excited to see it. Uh, so it is a video recorder. It can take in SDI or HDMI and record that in either ProRes or DNX HD, two very uh, robust and reliable compression. So we like that option as well. Uh, so here, as you can see, I have the, the unit uh, has an LCD screen built in. They've actually replaced this LCD screen since we've seen it in NAB, and it's a very nice panel with a good angle of view uh, and just a nice qual matte quality for seeing outside. Uh, the buttons on the unit itself are very nice. Just holding it in your hand feels good, uh, reliable buttons, very easy to click on. It's, it's not a touch screen. Everything's button or wheel driven here, the big wheel on the side. A very nice thing to have. Uh, and then I have big buttons down below here as well. Uh, stop, record, etc. And hit the record button and you really get that nice solid red button. Uh, the unit runs on 12 volt power through a Hiroshi plug here or on L, Sony, L, L batteries uh, from Sony, those L type batteries. Uh, you can put two of those in the back of the unit for, uh, for running off those instead. Uh, it, it will have other backs possibly in the future as well. And it does have a mounting point right here. So the things you don't really see here are, are those. Um, so what does it record on? Well, the ProRes and DNX go on to either SSD, solid state drives, or compact flash cards. So uh, compact flash goes straight up here in the top. It's just a built-in little reader. And you see here, there it goes. And I have the SanDisk Extreme Pro cards there. And I can record directly to those. Uh, or I can record onto SSD through a little caddy device here. So there's a little caddy. There it is. Uh, the caddy snaps in or out of the unit and, and it contains the SSD. Here's your S solid state drive. It's from, this one's from Samsung. You can get a lot of different versions, of course. We just like the Samsung because they're fast and reliable. Uh, the caddy itself is a very cool unit. It actually has, beyond just talking to the, talking to the uh, PIX240 here, that it has in itself a USB 3 uh, plug and a FireWire 800 plug and then an eSATA plug as well. So all these plugs are on there so you can actually use the caddy to just download the contents off the SSD. So it's a reader and it talks to the unit just like that and I can snap it right back in and bam, I'm, I'm back in business again. Now I don't have to dismount the, uh, the media as long as I'm not recording to it. Uh, I can just pop it in or out just like I did and it's fine. So very cool that way. Looking at this, this unit itself, Again, we have nice buttons, et cetera. The buttons uh, let me see different things, such as this audio display. Let lets me see up to eight audio tracks that I could be recording on the device at once. I have an LCD button here, which turns all the stuff off the screen if I don't want to see it. There it is, like nice and clean. I have a, a files button here, which lets me see all my recorded clips and choose to play them back, et cetera. Uh, and then finally, I, of course, I have a menu button, which controls all the settings of the unit. So that's all in there. Let's go through a couple of key features that I really like about this device. The first is file storage, which lets me select um, which media I want to record to, either compact flash card or SSD. And it's important to know that if one fills up, it will jump to the other. So I have a lot of record time possibility, uh, being that that Samsung drive is 256 gigabytes, I get a lot of record time. If I can jump over to the CF card to, in order to keep recording continuously, that's a nice feature to have. Below that, I have something called file splits every. Uh, the, cam the, the, the PIX240 will uh, format the, the memory in uh, what they call UDF, uh, Universal Disk Format. Uh, this is a, uh, a, far a partitioning system that lets me uh, have very large files in it. So I could have one giant ProRes file, for instance, but they try to, uh, we try to avoid that because we don't want to have one big clip on, our, on a whole card or a whole SSD. And so what they've done here is said, well, we can let you split that file every so often in order to make sure that you don't get too big. So I, I think this is a nice feature to have. Uh, you can actually lower, lower that down to as low as one minute. So you have lots of small clips that all stitch back together again if you, if you want to. Uh, cool thing, and it's just important for data integrity. Below that, I do have uh, the ability to name uh, clips, et cetera, just like that. 
um, right on the side of the unit. Just the different real take names, et cetera. That's how it's going to name them on the, on the drive. Uh, so we go down. Oh, and finally, I can format my drives here as well. Uh, into the video menu here, uh, of course, I can select between either HDMI or SDI. Right now, I'm feeding HDMI from a, a FS100 from Sony into the unit. And sending that signal in there, and it actually is converting it also to SDI for me. So the unit will let me send a signal from HDMI to SDI or vice versa. Of course, there's a lot of possibilities here. Uh, next thing I have below there, it says uh, file resolution rate. Uh, this is saying, what am I going to record in? Well, right now, it's the same as source, same as video input. Uh, what I can, what I'm saying is just whatever you feed me, it will record. Well, say I didn't want to necessarily record what I'm being sent. For instance, in this camera, the FS100, I can send the, can send the camera, send the, send the PIX240 uh, a 5994 signal, but in fact, the camera's recording in 24. So this camera records 24, but then it adds pull down, 2 3 pull down, to make 5994 interlaced video. I probably don't want to record in that on this device. So what I can do is say, actually, don't record in uh, with the same source, record in 1080p 24 slash 23976. I do that and it will, uh, it will remove the pull down for me. Uh, it's a very cool feature for the FS100 and other cameras that do the same thing. But also I can use the settings to say uh, up res or down res my, my image. Feed 720 in and record 1080. Feed 1080 in, record 720, et cetera. Very cool feature to have uh, in the camera, in the, in, the, in the recorder. And then finally I can choose my compressions from uh, either ProRes or DNX HD and all flavors, a ProRes up to HQ and all flavors of DNX up to 220 10-bit. So a nice feature there. <clears throat> in terms of audio, of course I have a huge number of features. This is a audio recording company. I have limiters, low cuts, delays, et cetera, et cetera. So many features, very important to have for anybody interested in really good quality audio. I can choose my sources being SDI or HDMI. I can just feed audio directly from those sources, or I can choose to feed my audio source from uh, an XLR input. So on the bottom of this unit, I do have two XLR feeds here, XLR 1 and 2 and 1 5 pin out. This can be analog audio or, uh, or AES EBU audio. So I can feed in up to four channels of audio just that way very easily. Uh, that's a very nice feature to have, and of course, all these audio settings are just hugely uh, powerful. So uh, let's go into uh, the menus again. Uh, time code sync, another really cool thing about this unit. Uh, of course, it can take time code from the SDI source or it can take time code from a time code in port here on the bottom again. I'll show you that one more time. I do have a time code IO port here set to in or out. And I do have a sync here, so I can also send sync signals for gen locking devices. And then, and then I do have on the, on the far side here a little Lemo plug, uh, which gives me uh, time code in or out traditionally for a smart site, et cetera. And if you notice right above that, it says ambient, which means it uses the ambient clock in there for very accurate time code. Basically, we can use this as a very accurate time code source. So I can jam multiple devices with this and know that it's very reliable. So very cool system there. <clears throat> All right, so in the rest of the set's headings here about generating time code, jamming time code, et cetera. Uh, below that is display where I can choose to uh, turn on or off all the information that I see on the LCD screen if I choose to. Uh, below that I have something in I have a system menus where I can set time and date, et cetera. But a couple of cool things I like in here are the ability to start, stop recording on the device by a different means. So of course I can just hit the button to record or I can start stop via the SDI's time code running forward, or just time code running forward in general can start the device. Uh, I also have the ability to uh, start stop the device from the, the link input. There's a little link plug here, which uh, allows me to start stop the device. Or I can actually flip that link port over to just a switch mode, a GPIO, general purpose input output type trigger. Basically just a closed loop trigger can start and stop the device as well. So there's a lot of options here. I can see a lot of possibilities for just triggering the cam, triggering the recorder. So that's nice. And below that, there's another cool option that I like, which I turned on already, which is called record button file split. We talked before about splitting files based on length of time of the file. Here you can actually split a file on demand. So say you're recording a long take, and you're like, well, I want to keep rolling, but I want to split the clip because I'm just a little nervous about the length of the clip. Hit the record button again while recording. It splits the clip, and you got yourself some security just built into that system. So very cool feature there. Uh, and then finally, I have something called quick setup which allows me to uh, save settings from the unit 
onto, a, onto a SSD or a CF card, just save all my current settings, and then load them into another PIX240 to get all my settings back again. So if I have multiple PIX240s on set, I'm all set that way. Uh, again, very full feature device. I like it very much. Uh, I'm just impressed by the build quality. Uh, we're gonna have these on demo in New York and LA and Chicago soon. Uh, so please come by our offices, check them out. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.